stoichiometry of a chemical reaction. In this experiment, we will be studying the stoichiometry of a chemical reaction using experimental data that we will collect from our experiment today. So the reaction that we have chosen for this experiment is the decomposition reaction of copper 2 carbonate, which will dissociate to give copper 2 oxide plus carbon dioxide. Now before I show you the experimental procedure, let's go and discuss the objective and the analysis of this experiment and then we will come back for the experimental setup. So, copper carbonate, when it's heated, it will give copper 2 oxide plus carbon dioxide. Now the copper 2 oxide will remain in the tube as we will see later and carbon dioxide is a gas so that's we will collect in order to study the stoichiometry of this reaction so basically we need first to look at the coefficients of this reaction where I can see that one mole of copper carbonate will give one mole of copper 2 oxide and one mole of carbon dioxide so basically what I'm going to do here I'm going to measure certain mass of copper carbonate and by dividing it to by the molar mass of copper carbonate I will get a certain number of mole of copper carbonate X the question now am I going to get X mole in here and also X mole in here so for me to know I have first to do this reaction and collect the products now as you will see in the experimental section copper carbonate will be placed in a tube that will be heated and copper oxide will remain in this tube so basically by weighing the remaining copper oxide I can just divide it by its molar mass and I will get the number of mole of copper 2 oxide however the way we collect CO2 it's not possible to get the mass however we can get the volume of CO2 now I will assume for carbon dioxide that it's behaving ideally and then I can use the expression PV is equal to NRT the volume of CO2 I can determine it experimentally so basically I'll put a check mark on the volume R is the universal gas constant so I know it temperature I will use a thermometer and I will just determine it so in order for me to determine the number of mole of carbon dioxide I still need to find the pressure of carbon dioxide and now I can say number of mole of carbon dioxide is equal to pressure multiplied by volume divided by R T so once I find the number of mole of carbon dioxide and the number of mole of copper 2 oxide I can look up the molar ratio and compare it to the theoretical one now I know that the molar ratio is 1 to 1 to 1 then I can check if the molar ratio is the same between X which is the number of mole of copper carbonate N copper oxide which I found in here and NCO2 which I determined in here but the remaining question is how can I determine the pressure of CO2 now this is how the experimental setup this is the copper carbonate before heating and the copper oxide will remain in this tube I will be showing you in this 
in the experimental section or part. Now, in here, I will be collecting the CO2. Okay? The CO2 will not fill all the tube, so a part of the tube will be still filled with water. Now, how can I determine the pressure of CO2? We know that the atmospheric pressure, P atmosphere, exerted on the surface of the water in the trough, it's going to be equal to, in here, the pressure of this gas, but this gas is not only CO2, it's CO2 plus the water vapor, so also pressure of water vapor. And this is because the CO2 is collected over water, and water has vapor, vapor pressure. So this should be taken into consideration. In addition to, I need to measure this height of water from the surface of water here to that level of water in the tube, and that's going to be the height of water remaining inside this tube. So now what I can say, I can say that the atmospheric pressure is equal to pressure of CO2 plus pressure of the water vapor plus the height. Now, this is water and I need to convert from millimeter water to millimeter mercury therefore I just divide by the density of mercury which is 13.6 and I will be using all pressures unit as millimeter Hg so the atmospheric pressure I can measure it in the lab using any pressure measuring device in here I have a simple device that can tell me the atmospheric pressure in this room pressure of water vapor I have a table that gives me the pressure, pressure of water vapor at certain temperature so I will be measuring the temperature of the water that I'm using using a thermometer and the height I will be using a ruler to determine it. Now once I determine atmospheric pressure, pressure of water vapor, the height, I can determine the pressure of CO2. Pressure of CO2 will be equal to the atmospheric pressure minus the pressure of the water vapor minus the height of water in the tube divided by 13.6. If I go back here and now I can say that check mark for pressure. So I have pressure of CO2, volume of CO2. I have measured the temperature. Therefore, I can determine the number of mole. So let's go back now for me to show you the details on the experimental procedure. Great. So now that we know the type of data that we need to collect, I will be showing you how you can set up your experiment. So this is your experimental setup. So this is going to be a zoom in to your experimental setup. In the tube here you will have the copper carbonate placed right above the concept kernel. There is a tube that will to the trough, the CO2 will be collected in this tube. You can see where you can see 
Okay, so now that we have finished with the experimental setup, we will need to weigh around 0.5 grams of copper 2 carbonate. Of course, we need to record this exact number because we will need it in our calculation as it was discussed before. Okay, so this is around 0.5 grams of copper carbonate. I will place it in the tube. Here you go. So now I'm ready to start my experiment. For that, I can start heating, but a safety warning. Before we start heating, we need to make sure that the pinch clamp is open. Make sure that the flame is gentle. Here, as you can see, the carbon dioxide that's being produced from the decomposition of copper carbonate is coming through this pipe and is getting collected in this tube. You will keep heating until that you see all the green solid, which is the copper carbonate, gets or changes to black solid and that there's no more gas bubbles coming in this collection tube. So with time you will see that the rate of producing gas bubbles or carbon dioxide bubbles will slow down. Okay. Now when to stop this reaction or the heating? It's when you see that there's no more gas bubbles being produced from this experiment. And here you go. So now you can stop the heating. And another safety warning is right after you stop the heating, you have to make sure that you open the tube and close the pinch clamp. The reason we open the tube is that when it starts to cool down, it will create a back pressure which will suck the water inside your tube. So now here we can measure the volume of the CO2 and as you can see you can read it here and also we can measure the height of water inside the tube by using a ruler by just positioning the ruler the zero on the surface of water and measuring until the height of the level of water inside the tube. One more thing that we have to do, we need to measure the temperature, so we will just stick a thermometer inside the trough and leave it to stabilize, then record the temperature that we are reading in here. So now, from the mass of copper to oxide, I can determine the number of mole. From the volume, the pressure, the temperature, I will be able to determine the number of moles of CO2 as it was discussed before. Therefore, I can compare the molar ratios between all three. I hope this video was helpful to you. I will see you next time.